the fed chair lived up to the promise the rates were cut by 50 basis points there was no surprise this was a general consensus and markets immediately shot up yesterday night but then came the profit booking erasing all the gains this confused the indian markets completely and in the morning the euphoria was totally missing from the indian stocks the it pack did not go up the oil pack has completely forgotten that windfall tax has been abolished today europe was in the green us markets also have opened in the green in the nugget section we'll try and stitch together the fidi data and what is likely to happen based upon the rate cuts and the general expectations at least for the next week hi everyone welcome to the episode of 19 september now thankfully today at least the bottom tier is not all it stocks bpcl is at the bottom this is totally against the expectation i had ntpc is at the top because ntpc subsidiary has filed for an ipo ntpc green and ntpc will be a major beneficiary the idea is to retire a lot of debt that will lead to increased profitability also for both companies what was not doing well at all the defense pack look at the cuts in defense HAL the big boy down 5% we are all used to see HAL go up 5% every day and the graph was totally skewed towards the bears today the only bulls around were the consumption pack and NTPC driven electrical utilities right at the bottom aerospace and defense software telecom now telecom today it was not Airtel the problem lied with Vodafone because the supreme court's verdict did not go in the favor of Vodafone and Vodafone while sinking took Indus Tower down with it and Vodafone's downfall was celebrated by Airtel that went up like a rocket around the same time when Vodafone crashed. One interesting element Indus Tower today lost more in market cap than the entire dues of Vodafone to Indus Tower. Look at the volumes of Indus Tower people were gushing out 10.7 times general volumes. Vodafone was expected 5x. This is a new nomenclature. Hopefully, it is a lot more readable. Similarly, look at the exit volumes in the defense pack. 3.5 times normal volumes for HAL. BL 2.3x. Trend-wise, the best sector right now is banking, followed by food and tobacco. Oil and gas and aerospace are the worst places to be right now in terms of the last two weeks. Nifty made an all-time high very early in the day and then it cooled down considerably. It never came back from that very narrow range. See, literally 50-60 points on an expiry day. Bank Nifty's usual trading range is around 0.8-0.9%. It was slightly volatile, but nothing major. This is not something traders would enjoy at all. Next week will be the monthly expiries. They will be hopefully more interesting than the Bank Nifty and Nifty expiries which we saw this week. Now, Nifty was a 0.2%. That is reflective only of the top stocks. The broader market was not doing well at all today. Bank Nifty was okay 0.5%. That's because ICIC made another lifetime high. And HDFC also was a 0.8%. IT was down today also 0.3%. Red Tower from TCS. Infosys slightly in green. I've mentioned this many times. Infosys is more of a darling for FIIs. Look at the sea of greens. Gold made a lifetime high internationally. Imagine what the rate would have been in India if the duties were not cut in India. This would have been around 85,000. My forecast for the year was 90 to 95,000 before the duty was cut. Silver is rocking about to cross 90,000. Bitcoin is having a wonderful time since the Fed's announcement yesterday. It has gone up 8%. The level 2 and level 3 currencies are actually dancing with joy. They were butchered for last one or two months. Usually this bull run in crypto was expected after September. The ADRs and GDRs are looking pretty. Brent is up. Currency is strengthening. US markets are back to the greens. They are all dancing with joy. Apple sales start tomorrow. The new iPhones, the swanky watches go on sale. As a result, Apple is up for third consecutive day. All three state-run OMCs are eyeing a term deal with Russia, which means long-term crude supply from Russia at a favorable price, stable price. This may happen early next year and mostly this will not be in USD or petrodollars. Let's see if this deal is impacted by the US presidential elections because Donald Trump has been threatening everyone who is a threat to petrodollars. Markets 23 stocks down, 27 up. HDFC Bank, NTPC, Reliance, HUL, Kotak. They were taking the markets up. Reliance had a very peculiar graph today. I'll talk about it when we come to the charts. What was down? HCL, Coal India, Larson & Tubro, ONGC and TCS. Who thought 
TCS would be at the bottom today. Nifty next 50 was worse. 31 stocks down, 19 only were up. Led by ICICI Lombard, InfoEdge, SBI Cards, Pidilite and Dabur. What was down today? HAL, ABB, Bharat Electronics, Gale, REC. I own three of these stocks. So my portfolio was in deep reds, HAL, ABB and REC. Let me take you through the interesting stocks for the day. Reliance's volume today was literally 1.5x and Reliance opened slightly gap up but then it cooled down significantly, literally threatened 2900 levels. A lot of people were today perspiring because 2900 should not get broken for Reliance. After stabilizing at 2912, Reliance went up and went up significantly, closing higher than the opening point. But there was enough anxiety given by Reliance within this move, literally 1.4% trading zone and it traversed that twice. Still Reliance is far far away from the 52 week high, literally 300 points to go. ICICI made a lifetime high early in the day, ATL started dancing, ATL to hit another high as soon as Vodafone's verdict was not in its favor. Nifty hit a 52 week high early in the day, but the volumes were higher. HDFC opened with a gap up but actually came down after that. Closed in the green but the outperformance of ICICI Bank may make public forget HDFC Bank. That's also because ICICI Bank is closing in on the market cap of HDFC at ferocious speed. In the IT back, info edge made a new high, LTI mine tree made a new high. Tomorrow is likely to be a lot better day because NASDAQ is shining right now. Defense deep cuts, HAL, BL, Musgaon, Doc. Nothing spared today except solar industry and I've said solar industry goes in the direction which is totally away from the other stocks in the defense pack. Vedanta and Hindustan Zinc were up in the metal pack. Hindustan Copper usually goes up towards the end of the day. Consumption pack did the best probably in the sectors today. HUL was up 1.25%. Asian Paints was up. Titan up 1.5%. Nestle up 1.5%. Britannia made another lifetime high. Gillette made a new high. Today there is some news from Andhra Pradesh where the alcohol prices or some policies have been revamped. As a result many alcohol stocks were up in the early trades but then they came down with the market and never went up again. This pack may pick up again in the next one or two days. Note that Andhra Pradesh reducing duties on alcohol is not good for Telangana as well as Karnataka. BSC cooled down today. In fact it recovered after 11 o'clock. Otherwise, it was down 78%. K-Fintech was down 3.5%. Most players actually corrected today. Autopack was doing reasonably well. MNM and TVS were down. But Maruti up 1.2%. Tata Motors and Bajaj Auto also were up. HDFC Bank, ICIC Bank and Kotak were up. The sector did not go anywhere because IRFC and Power Finance were down a lot. Look at the volumes in the banks. These are very large companies. The volumes were very high in the IT sector also but the sector did not do well because TCS was down a lot so was HCL and Wipro. When IT pack goes up persistent is usually the best performer. I have bought some stocks of persistent but I might increase them in the days to come. Right now the problem is I have run out of money. NTPC and Adani Greens were up with very high volumes. Even Adani Energy 2.5x volumes. Besides Reliance, there was no one standing in the green in the oil pack. Volumes were on the high side only for most stocks. This should change. I am not able to figure out why the oil pack is not celebrating the fall in windfall tax. Crude has become costly a little only but again 68 was in any case never sustainable. Consumption pack was in party mood, no big upticks. However, the green was all over the place. Nestle's volume were extraordinary 2.8x. Nestle is not usually that volatile despite the split and reduction in the price. Look at the cruel side of numbers. Radico Khetan made a lifetime high but it was down 6.2%. Because of the Andhra Pradesh news, the brewery stocks were doing well. United Spirits, United Breweries. Look at the volumes. This pack will go up more in the days to come in my opinion. Chemicals made a comeback, small one. Asian Paints, Pedialite both were up. Construction Engineering had deep cuts. Cement also corrected, Paisa Bazaar up 4%, KFIN down 4%. Usually these two cancel out each other. DMART up 1.5%. On a sad day for the markets, home building was actually up. Same with household goods, it has been sulking for a while but today it was up. LIC is not looking good at all, 22% away from its 52 week high. Investment banking is dominated by BSC right now but literally every stock was down today. DLF was down but the other real estate players were doing pretty well. All specialty retailers including Kalanjurals were doing well today. So was Titan. 
इंडस टावर एंड वोडाफोन हिट लोअर सर्किट एंड द लोअर सर्किट वॉज एक्चुअली रिवाइज फॉर बोथ ऑफ दम स्लाइट रिकवरी टूवर्ड्स द एंड दिस द फर्स्ट टाइम आई सीन स्टॉक हिट फिफ्टी टू वीक लो ऑन माई चार्ट I was literally out of cash today to buy more. I bought Radico Khetan because it was down a lot, and I expect alcohol stocks to do well at these levels. Ethanol blending in petrol does not make too much commercial sense, so alcohol companies will get ethanol cheaply. I bought PFC; it was down a lot yesterday. REC was down a lot, so I bought that stock. I am happy to lap up REC and PFC whenever they fall. Today I'll try to bring you in a very interesting perspective. Yesterday, millions, perhaps billions of people were waiting for the Fed to cut rates. Everyone expected 50 basis points, which was given. But half an hour later, literally everything across the globe was falling down. It seemed that everyone was anticipating that cut, and traders had taken positions in line, and they booked profits heavily immediately after the party began. And that brought down the stocks and the indices significantly in the US. In India, also windfall tax it has been cut. Everyone cried when windfall tax was increased. Now windfall tax is abolished. No one is partying. Everyone thought that banking and IT would do well once the rates are cut. However, that did not happen. Banking is doing okay, but IT is not celebrating at all. So what is happening in Indian market? I wanted to bring in the perspective of FII, DII, and an international picture. Two third of this month are gone literally. The FII number for the month is green. This is data from Money Control. Twelve thousand two hundred crore. DI is the number is similar. Twelve thousand six hundred crores net buy from both sides in the cash market. Usually DII's number is way higher. Last month it was fifty thousand, twenty three thousand in the previous month. Twenty eight, fifty five, forty four, fifty six, twenty five. Is retail giving less money or is DI saving the money because next month on first they will get more money and they have to be ninety five ninety six percent invested. So what is happening? Problem is DIs don't buy so much. They usually sell and DIs buy what they sell. If you see these months, FIs did not sell much. As a result, DIs did not buy too much. But now FIs are actually buying. DIs sell, FIs buy. FIs sell, DIs buy. This is a cycle going on, and retail is not able to understand or crack it at all because people give money to DIs or mutual funds to keep it for long run, long term investments, ten year, fifteen year, my retirement money. But what do DIs do? They sell for fourteen thousand crore. They buy for sixteen thousand crore. They sell for eleven thousand crore. They buy for eleven thousand crore. Heavy trading by DIs. In my opinion, this month DIs are right now waiting for FIs to have a good selling day and buy a lot that day. And FIs are in no mood to sell this month, it seems. And I'll talk about that in the next slide. Why? In short, if DIs have to burn the cash that they have received this month within this month, there is a party coming up next week, and that is when maybe DIs are buying and FIs may just exit some stocks to book some profits. Not that they wanted to sell. There are few macro inputs that you have already seen. I'm just summarizing them. India has got extra weight in the JPMC bond index, and that is why bond inflows into India were expected to go up in any case. This news is at least two months old. U.S. interest rates have been cut. Bond yields will go down, and as a result, people looking for good income from fixed income they will be forced to look outside U.S. in general, especially the ones who can take more risk. Typical hedge funds. What is a good destination for them in terms of yields? India. Especially because India has already liberalized the bond markets. Not that FIs care too much about 10 lakhs as a unit size for bonds, but that 10 lakh came down to 1 lakh, and that came down for select bonds to 10,000 now. And as a result, lot of people, lot of corporates, lot of NBFCs are issuing bonds in the Indian market right now. Banks are helping because they are not getting casa balances, they are not getting fixed deposits. NBFCs offer 10, 11, 12 percent interest rates. FIs typically don't get into NBFC bonds because none of them is AAA rated. Or A plus A minus kind of rated. Most of them are in B category only. Also, India has found a new craze, or rather rediscovered the craze for foreign money in terms of QIP. I shared that input yesterday also. A lot of money is coming into India via QIPs. Everyone who is able to raise money from outside, they want to pay only five six percent outside India, not pay nine ten eleven percent. The commercial borrowing rate in India. This is again a problem for banks because their profit margin will go down if corporates don't borrow from them. And they go abroad. So, in a nutshell, a lot of money will come in from the foreign, from foreign countries, especially US, into bonds, into equity. What will be the side effect? India's forex reserves will go up. I have a smile on my face when this money is called forex reserve because I call it IOU. This is not permanent money. India has not earned it. The rupee will strengthen. We are already seeing that rupee has strengthened about 30 paisa in the last two three days itself. This will strengthen further probably in the short term. This may even go to 82. Now impact on imports. 
if rupee is stronger then you pay less per dollar as a result imports become cheaper the biggest imports are coal gold crude cgc impact on exports the biggest exports for the country one of them is it you get less inr per dollar unless you have hedged most companies do not hedge much these days so you earn less this is a negative sentiment for it companies at least in the immediate coming up quarter which is q3 the results will be out in january the impact on result will depend upon which industry you are for example the cgc pack will like it it pack will not like it pharma also may not like it because a significant pharma is exported impact on stock markets will be mixed the fi money coming into equity will take the markets up select stocks and the indices the bigger ones there will be significant debt raised by the companies who can service the debt they not want to dilute the equity typical example is the adani pack they do a lot of qips and as a result their interest coverage ratios are among the best despite such a heavy borrowing so you might see less of public and follow up issues in the times to come besides the companies who are listing for the first time their promoters and investors want to exit and sell their stocks very expensive just like some of the recent issues that is not raising money that is exiting at a very high valuation if any of these inputs you disagree with let me know we can, we can debate on them or i can create a new video i'll be happy to learn from your perspective also hope this was useful thanks for watching i'll see you tomorrow